Good morning, everyone. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> For our first hymn, we'll go ahead and turn to page 390, and we will sing the first and last verse of I Surrender All. When you find it, if you could please stand. All to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all I surrender all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Last verse. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power, let thy blessings fall on me. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Well, it's good to be back again tonight. Uh, thank you, those of you that went out with us to get out more tracks. And uh, what was it called again? Kites for Mobile? Or Kites Over Mobile? And uh, I think we saw a little over 300 tracks or somewhere around there given out. And I appreciate all that participated in that. And uh, we had quite a few promised to be here, uh, quite a few looking for new church homes. So we just pray that God continues to work and uh, see what uh, maybe we'll see them come and uh, be a part of what God is doing here at Grace Bible Baptist Church. Let's go to God in prayer and uh, see what God has for us this evening. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time together around your word. Father, I pray that uh, the messages this morning have spoken to our hearts and uh, drawn us closer to you. And Father, here we are again tonight are preparing to hear more from your word and God we pray that you would speak to our hearts as only you can that uh, you would give us the ears to hear it the hearts to apply it to our lives we would be drawn ever closer to you uh, and uh, that transformation takes place in our hearts and in our lives father we look for you to bless tonight in Jesus precious and holy name we pray and thank you amen for our next hymn this evening we'll go ahead and turn to page 350 and we will sing the first, second, and last verse of Are You Washed in the Blood? When you find it, you can remain seated. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Verse 2. Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Verse 4. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. 
oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? For our last hymn this evening, we'll turn to page 173, and we will sing the first and second verse of Blessed Be the Name. All praise to Him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave His Son for man to die, that He might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 2. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Pastor will be preaching this evening from Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 to 25. So that's Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 to 25. By way of announcement, please remember the 15th, 16th, and 17th, very important days as the 15th and 16th are going to be work days. So um, you can make a decision as to uh, your availability. We would love to have as many hands as possible uh, on the job, of course, uh, keeping uh, the understanding that we may be kicking up a lot of dust so uh, you may want to be dressed appropriately, um, clothes you don't mind getting dusted up, uh, but at the same time, we're going to be uh, doing our best to prepare our um, grounds for the 17th, which is Easter. Uh, please be aware of the different service times. That will be 1030 a.m. for our um, Resurrection Sunday service, as well as 4 p.m. So 1030 a.m. and 4 p.m. will be the service times for this coming Sunday. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, again, a great time of uh, passing out tracks and being able to be in touch with others this afternoon with Kites Over Mobile. Um, I, I, it got me overjoyed in a way of, I have to say this, I, I found myself laughing and chuckling in my seat just a moment ago, but uh, I was so, I, I guess, so in tune with what we were doing earlier. I started thinking to myself, man, somebody sure is off tune singing, and I realized that was me. <laughs> You may, you may not get a kick out of that, but I was just thinking, man, it's, it's great to be able to make a noise, a joyful noise into the Lord and nobody judging me. So I appreciate Pastor not calling me out on that. Um, but I got to remember, he's the manly guy. So uh, some of you will get that a little bit later on. But anyway, let's go to the Lord and word of prayer and thank him for uh, what he's going to do with the offering. And let's ask him for his blessing. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today and the events of today, Lord, the joy that you brought us today. Thank you for your word. Uh, the reassuring promises, uh, Lord, the wonder of it, Lord. Thank you so much for the blessings that we have experienced by being in your house. Lord, we ask you would help this offering to be a blessing to your kingdom, uh, be with the gift as well as the giver. May it uh, go to satisfy your kingdom, satisfy your purpose. It has in your name we pray. Amen.
Amen and amen. Matthew chapter 26. Kind of get veering away from what we normally do on Sunday evenings right now. So we've been going through the uh, uh, soul winning series. And uh, we are still wanting to make sure that we're careful to do that. And again, I want to reiterate, I appreciate those that have invested and gone and made visits today and gone and given tracts and uh, invited people to the house of God, told people about the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And um, uh, just the last uh, stop we made there, we had to tell us that they did not know that they were saved. They did not know that if they were to, to die today, that their home was heaven. And uh, pray with me for them. We want God to continue to work in their hearts and their lives. And uh, it's, it's very important that you deal with it then, but if they don't want to deal with it then, you can't make them. Uh, so just pray that God will continue to, to tug at their heart and that they'll come to know him before it's too late. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 14, it says, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. It's the time of the Passover, and just before the Last Supper, Jesus declares that, one of them would betray him. This is the one that they had seen walk on the water. This is the one they had seen calm the same winds and seas with just his voice. Peace be still. And they were amazed and said, the winds and the seas obey him. This is the same Jesus that said, Lazarus, come forth. Boy, he, he opened the eyes of the blind. He healed the sick. Jesus who touched the leper. Boy, back in that day or any day, no one dared touch a leper, but Jesus did. This same Jesus who had power to forgive and to heal and to save, one of them would betray him. The messages of the next couple of services will be kind of a sobering thought, and I, I, I give you that because it's a sober time. It's, it's a time where uh, there's betrayal, there's the sacrifice, there's, there's much that's taking place. But in the end of it all, we're rejoicing as Christians that this took place. Now, Judas did not have to betray Jesus. Verse 24 again said, the son of man goeth as it is written of him. He was going to pay the penalty for our sins anyway. Judas did not have to betray Jesus. It also says, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time together around your word. And I pray that you are already speaking to our hearts. Father, would you draw us closer to you? Father, would you conform us more and more to your image? Help us to be a blessing. We'll praise you and we'll love you for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray and thank you. Amen. One of you 
shall betray me. This is the thought that Jesus gives as he's sitting for the Passover. As he sits to eat with his disciples. What a terrible thought. And they thought it immediately. One of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful. A terrible fact. You know, we would say, not me, Lord. I, I wouldn't do that. I can imagine us saying, no, there's no way I would do that to you, God. No, 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 no. I wouldn't do that. Uh, we would not dare do that to Jesus. I could hear us saying those words. How dare one of y'all do that to him? Well, we can we can get indignant about some things and, and voice our opinion on this matter. And how dare somebody do that? And I would never do that. But I took note of the fact that the disciples, each and every one of them, said, Lord, is it me? Is it me that's going to betray you? It was the same Jesus that told Peter, you'll deny me three times. And Peter said, I'll never deny you. That's, that's more of where, where we want to be. I, I would never do that to you. But truth be told, Peter denied Christ. Jesus is saying, one of you will betray me. None of them assumed it was Judas. None of them assumed it was any of the others. They all looked inward. And that's a good reminder is what we need to do as Christians as the word of God is being preached, as it's being spoken, as it's being delivered. Instead of looking across the pew or looking across behind you or looking to see hey, that message was for them over there, right there. Uh, Lord, is it for me? Lord, what uh, what is this that you you have for me today? And not uh, God, I, I hope I sure hope you fix my husband. I sure hope you fix my wife when we get to church because this has been ridiculous here lately. No, it's. God, what do you have for me? I sure wish you'd fix my brother or my sister. Uh, boy, they need you, Lord. They, it's obvious they need you. But Lord, what do you have for me? Is it I? None of them assumed it was Judas. When was the last time you asked God to tell you about you? When was the last time you said, God, here it is. I'm, I'm putting me on the table. Show me what needs to change. Show me what needs to be different in my life. That's pretty much what the disciples are doing here. Lord, is it I? Now, Judas got to a point where he had considered this thing and then he was doing it. Uh, betrayal doesn't happen overnight. It happened uh, because he thought on it. He he uh, lingered in this thing. He he stayed around it. He he gave it some time to think about it and, and marinate in his mind. And next thing you know, he was doing it. Look at chapter 26 and verse 6 of Matthew. Matthew 26 and verse 6, it says, Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at me. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? You're talking a very expensive ointment. Very precious. For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. This, this could have had better use. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you. But me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, whosoever... This gospel shall be preached in the, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world. There all there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. She's preparing the body of our Lord. And then you find in verse 14, it's like Judas had enough. You know, I've seen Jesus do this over and over and over again. You know, I, I, I've not liked the way he's done this. I'm not like the way uh, we read through the scriptures in church. I'm, I'm not like the way pastor did this right here. I'm not like the way uh, we have to go according to God's word. So he got away and he came up with a plan on his own. He went away from the Lord. Then one of the 12 called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests and said unto them, what will you give me? This is after watching what has just taken place, his body being prepared. And he says, hey, I've had enough. 
I've seen this over and over and over again. This is a waste. I can tell you how to get him. Well, he got somewhere in his mind and he allowed Satan to get him somewhere in his mind that he should have never, ever been. He got to that point after having considered. Don't tell him how many times this thought went through his mind. Well, I could make some money because he's wasting money. I could make some money real quick. Well, I, I, I have this love for money. I, I, I love this thing. So I could change this. Somewhere along the way, Judas preferred the money over Christ. He looked for opportunities to betray Christ. He looked for opportunities to go into sin. We shouldn't be looking for opportunities to get away from God. We shouldn't be looking for opportunities to gain in the world. We shouldn't be looking for opportunities to betray Christ. He looked for opportunity to go into sin. He plotted his sin. Nine times out of ten, you'll find that sin was plotted. Judas turns on Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Look at John chapter 13. John chapter 13 and verse 21. John chapter 13, you say 30 pieces of silver? Are you serious? Well, have you betrayed him for anything? John chapter 13 and verse 21. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked on one another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned unto him, that he should ask who it, who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. See, when you get away from God, you allow Satan room to enter in. You may think, oh, that's not that big a deal. I'm, I'm not really truly betraying him but you give satan room to enter in then said jesus unto him that thou doest do quickly you know god will let you do what you desire god will let you go the route that you want to go verse 28 now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this to them for some of them thought that because Judas had the bag that Jesus said, had said unto him, buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Judas knew. He then, having received the sock, went immediately out. And it was night. Jesus never stopped him. You have a free will. It may not be that Jesus is for it. It may not be that he will allow it in the tabernacle, in the temple. But if you want to leave out, he will let you leave out. Can I ask you tonight, what is Satan offering you to betray Jesus? I said, boy, that's a terrible thought. But people do it over and over and over again. And Jesus will let you do it. That thou doest, do quickly. Be very careful what you do. Be very careful where you go. Be very careful what you involve yourself in. You can't stop someone from going out into sin. We can tell them, we can warn them, we can plead with them, but there comes a point when the Lord says, that thou doest, do quickly. If that's the route you want to go, go ahead. That's not, that doesn't mean that it's the best thing for you. Now, Judas wasn't the first to betray Jesus, and he wouldn't be the last either. He wouldn't be the last. That doesn't mean that you have to do wrong yourself. That doesn't mean that you have to be the one to betray Jesus. Let others go and betray Jesus if they so choose. 
Je Jesus didn't walk out with Judas. I hope you see that. Jesus told him, whatever you're going to do, go do it. The rest of the disciples stayed right there with him where they needed to be. Judas left into the night. Judas left into the darkness. Judas left into whatever Satan had waiting for him. Jesus didn't go with him. Judas left him. Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Having loved this present world. Knowing that Jesus would be betrayed. Knowing that he would be betrayed. He still served. Now, there's two things I want us to look at. I want to make sure that we're not betraying Jesus. And I also want to look at how Jesus served, knowing that he would be betrayed. He still served. Look at chapter 13 and verse 1, John 13, 1. It says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the father had given all things into his hand and that he was to come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin, knowing he's about to be betrayed and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, why dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered, If I wash thee not, thou, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. You're not all clean. So after that he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done unto you? You call me master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye ought also to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Lord, you mean people can be betraying you and you be serving them and there's happiness there? Yeah. Verse 18, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth, receiveth him, uh, receiveth me, excuse me, receiveth him that sent me. Verse 21, and when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Have you ever gone out of your way to do something extraordinary for the person you knew had done you wrong? Here is our Lord and Savior, Master, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Boy, they, they laid out the palm leaves for him. They, they did all kind of things, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. And here he is now being betrayed and he grabs a towel and he washes the feet of the person that's going to betray him. Troubled, but serving still. Doesn't mean that you're going to be happy, man, I'm the man, they betrayed me. Let me do everything I can. To... No, this isn't a 
joyous time. But I still got a job to do. Know ye what I've done unto you? Look at Hebrews chapter 12. Jesus shows the heart of a servant. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Hebrews 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on, at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. That's where we are today. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Why would we need to consider that lest you be weary and faint in your minds? Because you'll get tired. The Bible says you've not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Consider Jesus. Consider Jesus. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Do we give up the first person that uh, turns on us? Well, let's shut the church down because we were betrayed. Somebody talked bad about us. Somebody said something that wasn't good in the community. Oh, man, can you believe they would say that about God's people and about God's church? Do we quit or do we keep on? Do we press on or do we say, oh, let's go have a pity party, y'all? One, two, three, aw. Oh. I mean, we got, we got to stand for God. We got to keep moving. We got to press on. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary in well-doing. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 4. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let this mind be in you. You know, even in betrayal, he still called Judas Friend, friend, look at it, Matthew 26 and verse 47, Matthew chapter 26, boy, if somebody turned their back on us and they betray us and we're ready to just cut ties and be done, we don't say friend, friend, what do you mean friend, no, backstabber, we want to we call it like we see it, uh, no, you, you're a traitor, you're, you're, um, you lied on me, you, you, you're a trickster, Jesus said, friend, man, that's a humbling thought. Matthew uh, 26 and verse 47. While he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the 12 came and with him a great multitude. Well, he brought an army to do his sin. A great multitude with swords and stabs and the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying, whomsoever I shall kiss. The same as he, hold him fast. I don't want y'all to there to be any uh, denying who it is. I want you to know that you got him. Verse 49, and forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, master, and kissed him. Most of us be ready to fight right there. Man, you know you out here betraying me right now. Man, you know you out here acting a fool. 
Man, I don't even want to see you right now. You know what you're up to. You're up to no good. And we'd have all kind of names we'd want to call them. But Jesus said in verse 50, and Jesus said unto him, friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. You know that thought of being called a friend? <laughs> what that must have done to Judas? To hear Jesus say, the both of them knowing what's taking place here. And he looks him in the eye and says, friend, man, ah, oh, that, that cuts deeper than if he had physically slapped him. You know, there's a way to handle problems. We, we want to take it in our own hands sometimes and we think we can handle it, but God has a way of handling it. Where if you let him handle it, he'll deal with it. It's not too late for a friend. There's redemption for a friend. Boy, I, I'll give space for a friend. Hey, we can discuss this because you're my friend. Hey, I will forgive you because you have the title friend. And that's what he called Judas. It wasn't too late for Judas. It was not too late. But Judas would see this thing all the way through. Can you imagine what it did to him though when he called him friend? That's who Jesus was. He'd go to the sinner and say, friend. They said he was the friend of sinners. Wherefore art thou come? Where are you coming from, Judas? I know what you've been up to, but say it. Spell it out, Judas. What have you been up to? As if Jesus didn't know. Adam, where art thou? As if God didn't know. Where's your sin gotten you? Jesus wants you to acknowledge where you've been. When you'll admit the truth, you might ask for some help. Judas could have said, oh, I've messed up. I, I have really messed up. I am sorry. This is what I've been up to. This is what I've done. But he wouldn't do that. Judas didn't ask for help. Judas didn't repent. But though Judas would betray Jesus, Jesus did not change who he was. There's a valuable lesson there. Many of us want to change who we are to deal with that person that's betrayed us. And that's not who Christ would have us to be. Jesus had one purpose, whether Judas betrayed him or not. And that was to take the sinner's place and die the sinner's death. So Judas was used of Satan in this instance. But either way, Christ was going to die for us. A sad place for Judas to be. A sad place for anyone to be that betrays Jesus. But Jesus still had a purpose. A hey, child of God, we've still got a purpose. As a church, we've got a purpose. As a child of God, as, as a Christian in this dark and evil world, we still have a purpose. Whether someone betrays you or not, lies on you or not, tells the truth about you or not, you have a purpose. God has given you a job to do. John 4.34 says, Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. In the middle of being betrayed, the work still was not done. The work still had to be completed. John 5, 17, but Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto and I work. I can't be focused on what Judas is doing. I've got to do what God has called me to do, what God has delivered for me to do, my appointed time in this earth. John 6, 38, for I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. John 9 verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night coming when no man can work. Luke 19, 10, what's the work? The son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. John 17, 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work. Some of us get sidelined by the betrayal. 
Some of us get distracted by the Judas in our life. And God is sitting there saying, hey, son, wake up. Wake up. Did you think all men were going to be for you? Did you think everybody was going to be on your side? Did you think everybody, did you not see what they did to my son? Not everybody is for you, but you must finish the work that I've given you to do. I've given you a job. I've given you an assignment. I've given you a calling. And you're sitting here stuttering and stammering and getting all hot under, under the collar because somebody's done you wrong. Instead of realizing I must work the work of him that sent me. I must do what God has told me to do. I must accomplish the father's will. See your calling through to the end. Don't get sidelined. Don't get distracted for such a time as this. We're in a dark time in America where we see race issues all over the place. We see um, um, crime in our own community, black on black crime. We see it. And we see people saying that, see, it's not a, a skin issue, it's sin issue. It is a sin issue. But most people don't see that. And there's all kind of bickering and arguing going back and forth. We can get caught up on that. And we can get locked in on that. And I have seen Christians go toe to toe on these issues. What we could do is say, you know what? I must be about my father's business. In this lost and dying world, people don't need to see Christians arguing and attacking one another and, and defending themselves, this church versus that church. No. What they need to see is the love of Christ. And we can't be so hurt over betrayal that we fail to continue to do the work that God has given us to do told our teenagers when I was there as their youth pastor. You got a lot happening in your school. I knew they were talking race issues while I was there as their youth pastor. I knew the things that they had discussed with me, things that they had to deal with in the classrooms. I said, for such a time as this, you have the greatest privilege. You look at me and say, what do you mean? Well, let me explain to you. God chose you for this assignment. God chose you to be a light in this hour. You can sit back and say, I can't believe people are doing me like that. Or you can be the light. You can sit back and be bitter about how things were done and a past and all of this stuff. Or you can be a light. You can, you can get caught up on what is today and what you see in churches today. Or you can be a light. You can get caught up on what you see in the world and how the world portrays Christians and what the world has to say of Christians and, and what they may think of Christians, or you can be a light. Jesus said, friend, friend, friend. We're living in a day and age that has not taken God by surprise. God's not sitting back saying, oh, I didn't see that coming. Oh, man, that one got me. Wow, where did that come from? Now that one blindsided me. I had no idea that was going to take place. But for some reason, in this time frame of life, God placed you right in the middle of it. But I can't believe it. God placed you right in the middle of it. Well, I just can't. God place you. Perspective. Joseph could have sat back and said, I can't believe. Every one of my brothers betrayed me. Every one of my brothers sold me. Every one of my brothers made a profit off of me. Every one of my brothers hated me. He never would have done anything for God. But Joseph stayed the course. And because of Joseph, many lives were saved. Many. Even the lives of his brothers. Those that betrayed him. You never know why God allows a thing to happen. They meant it for evil. That's clear. It was evil intent on Judah's part. But oh, the intent of God, the intent of God, it's beautiful. God meant it for good. Judas had, had um, um, 
money on his mind, but Christ had you on his mind. Boy, God's plan is perfect. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 20 says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be you reconciled to God. We are here today in this point in time in the place of Jesus Christ. We're not Christ, but we are here in his place doing his business. Are we distracted by how somebody did us? Are we, are we caught up on what somebody said about us? Or are we focused on the plan? It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to say, man, that was my best friend. But we, we sat down at many dinners together. I can't believe they would say that of me. I can't believe they would call me out like that in front of everybody. I can't believe they would say this of me. I can't believe they talked to me like that. I thought we were friends. You sat at my table. You, we, we, I, I was with your children and, and you with mine and we were friends, man. Your family stayed at my home and I stayed at your home. We were friends. <laughs> You're caught up on Judas. Jesus was caught up on the work. There will be a Judas, but there is a work. Does it mean that we like what Judas is doing? But the work's got to be done whether Judas betrays you or not. And you can get caught up on, he betrayed me, or you can get caught up on the work. Here we are in the place of Christ, doing the work of Christ. You can expect betrayal. Anticipate it. Expect it. But don't dwell in it. Don't live in it. Know that it might happen, but focus on the main goal. And here it is, winning souls. The church is labeled. Men call evil good and good evil. Sin is being forced to, and taught in the schools now. We get to stand up and stand out for God. What an honor. What a privilege. It's a dark world, but I'm a light in this dark world. Boy, things are terrible, but we have the light of Christ. Imagine if we shut the doors and the light grew dim. Just how bad it would be in this area. But because God has placed a church here, I've heard over and over again, things have calmed down. Boy, God did something when he put a church right there. We've got to be the light. You cannot help what Judas does but you have full control over what you do. Don't let your faithfulness to God be deterred by Judas. Well, I was living for God till he said and he did. Well, what do they have to do? What is that to thee? Follow thou me. You're locked in on somebody else and that's half the problem. You're focused on them instead of focusing on Christ. Don't let your firm stand be weakened because of a Judas. Don't be discouraged because you have had a Judas betray you. Press on, keep serving, keep loving, keep witnessing, keep singing, keep smiling. Press on, keep praying, keep rejoicing. When Satan attacks, here's one for you. Pull out the foot bath. <laughs> oh, Satan's attacking. Well, let me find somewhere to serve. Let me find something to do. What did Jesus do? I, I know I'm about to be betrayed. <laughs> I know he's in here right now. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll wash his feet. Boy, what an example of our Savior. If thine enemy hunger, feed him. But you don't know. You don't realize what he's done to me. What did Jesus say? <laughs> he's hungry. Feed him. You doing that may point them to Christ. But getting in our flesh, doing things how we want to handle it, taking it into our own hands, they'll never see Christ in us. 
And it's so easy to do. It's so easy to say, I can't believe you. I'm done with you. Never again. You'll never have that opportunity again. Jesus said, friend. Those are hard words to say. <laughs> but are we going to be an effective witness? Romans chapter 12, our last verse. Romans chapter 12. Jesus is nearing his time and Judas is betraying him. Boy, he's got the cross on his mind. Judas is betraying him. He's got the wrath of God in the back of his mind. I don't want to do this. And Judas is betraying him. You got a lot going on in your life, child of God, and you're being betrayed. Jesus knows right where you are. Romans chapter 12 and verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heat coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, when I was, I think about that verse, heaping coals of fire. When I was younger and a friend had done me wrong, I was going to do everything good I could to you so God could get you. God deal with you. That's my mind as a kid. No, 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 no. You got the wrong thought, the wrong idea about it, son. Love him. Love him. Genuinely love them. And the coals of fire of conviction. <laughs> oh man. They can't get away from that. You getting back at them and you doing your thing. They'll get over that. But they're not going to get over God. As a matter of fact, I don't want them to get over God. So let me love on them. Let me call them friend. Let me show them the love of Christ. Our Lord and Savior is preparing to die. And he's being betrayed. But what an example. With all the weight of the world on his back, literally the weight of the world on his shoulders. And one betraying him, he still had it in him to call Judas. Friend. Let's try to be a little bit more like Christ. And less like our flesh. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time together around your word. And Father, what a sad time as we look in the life of Judas and the life of our Savior of betrayal. But what an example we have in Christ to continue to let the light of the gospel shine in this dark and evil world. Father, help us to do just that. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. What betrayal may come with it. What we may consider the weight of the world on our shoulders. Father, there are things we're dealing with. There are things that we face this week. There are things that, that we have to handle and take care of this week. But Father, in it all. Let it be more than evident. Let the world clearly see the love of Christ in us. We'll praise you and love you for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray and thank you. Amen. Bless